Here we have the final volume of Index New Testament. And something very weird has happened to Toma. He's given birth to another version of himself who has not only stolen his special power, but has also turned him into a dragon. Yep, I'm not joking. And no, this isn't a crappy fan fiction. What happens when evil Toma tries to steal OG Toma's harem? What was Misaki's controversial decision that triggered many fans? And will Toma restore his lost memories? Stay tuned. We follow directly from the events of New Testament Volume 22 as Toma split the Royal Yacht Britannia in two thanks to his weird fish eggs, which emerged from his right arm. But something bizarre hatched from them. Himself? What the fuck is going on? This doppelganger is known as Kamijo no Toma, or KNT for short, and is basically the invisible thing in human form, as he's been a conscious presence in Toma's arm this entire time. What's even more unbelievable is that KNT has all of Terma's memories. Even the ones that were destroyed by Index and Misaki. The dude knows everything. That's why KNT considers himself to be the real Terma, labeling the hero we all know and love as a faker without a Magic Breaker. As OG Terma was just masquerading of who he believes Terma is, since Terma has no way of knowing who he was before his amnesia. Damn, that's a lot of Termas. Anyway, KNT. KNT pretty much leaves Toma to die in the cold as he rejoins everyone who helped defeat Koronzon in the previous volume, without them questioning a thing. The main group of KNT, Index, Mikoto, and Misaki, in addition to the forces of England, are invited to Windsor Castle to party and celebrate due to preventing the total destruction of everything in existence. I guess that's deserved. And you know the first chapter of this book is going to be some abyss-level fiction when it starts off with this sentence. Yikes. Our trio of girls then spend the entire chapter putting on their new dresses as Kamachi wants us to experience trash before the peak, story bitch. gets peak. Never change, Kamachi. Never change. At least Toma, I mean K and C, got into his tuxedo drip without any issues. He manages to seamlessly blend in with the others, acting exactly how Toma would, with the girls not suspecting a thing, at least for now. But with one unusual exception, as Toma directly turns to Misaki and says her name, causing tears to form in her eyes, as the boy she loves somehow remembers her. Surely things are too good to be true. There is something not quite right going on here, huh? Anyway, the celebration comes to a halt as a mysterious blue and yellow dragon is on the loose at the castle, with KNT knowing exactly who it is. KNT also spends some time one on one with Index, saying that Alistair and Karonzon are gone. Not really, though. And this should give them the chance to live peacefully in Academy City without issue, which should be considered Index's true home instead of the Anglican Church. This conversation won't be relevant again until the end. Suddenly, the dragon returns, crashing into the castle and facing down KNT and the girls. As the dragon slowly changes form into what appears to be Kamijo Toma? Wow, he's copied Issei, Sieg, and Tatsumi. Very original. Much like the readers, the girls can't quite believe their eyes. OG Toma transforms back into a human, but he has a new right arm, which has the same colors as the strange beast. Blue and yellow, with it acting as the substitute for Imagine Breaker since KNT stole it. Queen Lizard then questions which spiky haired boy is the real deal, to which KNT shows off Imagine Breaker and goes on a monologue bragging about how he remembers everything from his past and how having these memories makes him the true Toma. As OG Toma tries to explain what happened to him, KNT violently lashes out before he can finish, hitting him with a metal tray and wine bottle across the face. KNT should be acting sus just like a true imposter. Even Sphinx the Cat sides with the OG. Then KNT embraces his devil like role by using any cheap tricks to earn the victory. He tempts Misaki to join his side against the others by using emotional damage. Misaki is conflicted, and she is well aware the boy in front of her is not the real Toma, and yet she cannot help 
but cling on to the miracle of Toma remembering her, as she decides to join K&T thanks to being gaslighted by the fake version of the boy she loves, causing Misaki to be hated by a large section of the fan base. But the guy who manipulated her gets a free pass. Seems very rational. Misaki's mind-controlling mental out ability goes berserk as she begins to take control of everyone at the castle. Even Mikoto's own electric defense barrier against it is fading as she uses the AAA or anti-art attachment to force Toma out of a window to save him as she finally succumbs to mental out's control too. By the way, if you would like to see a full video explaining K and T and the true meaning behind this character, then you should like the video and subscribe, and I will consider doing it if enough of you do so. Your move. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Anna Sprengel and Iwaz are watching this go down and have placed their bets on K and T to win. How dare they? Anyway, Terma gets flung out the castle, but at least Offenus is there to keep him company. While most other magicians in the castle have a mechanism against being controlled, which basically prevents their bodies from moving so they can't be used as puppets, with only 20% of the castle being under Misaki's influence. Toma then meets up with the anti KNT squad, including Accelerator, Clipper Puzzle 545, Dion Fortune, Princess Romea, Takitsubo Riko, and lastly, Hamazura Shiage, who is half naked again, by the way. It sure is nice that Kamachi is including some man service for a change. Gender equality at its best. Yep, the blokes down at the pub are stripping down a random Japanese tourist because that's the standard British welcome everyone deserves. Even though drunk Brits have a notorious reputation, we ain't this bad, I promise. Thomas says to the group that he can't handle this alone and asks a massive favor from the others to help him free Windsor Castle from the tyrannical rule of KNT. Toma asking for help? What is this? Character development? Toma learns to move on from what he doesn't know about the past as he embraces his present identity as the new Toma and decides to prioritize his own desires for the future. Everyone agrees to help the OG as the assault on the castle is about to commence. We move back to KNT as he talks to Queen Elizard, threatening her by saying he would destroy Katana II, a national symbol of the UK and Elizard's dimension severing spiritual item. He also threatens destroying the other spiritual items that help safeguard the country, unless Elizard and her forces side with him against the OG Toma, to which she reluctantly accepts for the well-being of her nation. Oh yeah, he also says he would add her youngest daughter Villian to his harem in typical Toma fashion if Elizard didn't accept. To which the queen was not very amused. While Misaki begins to feel guilt for what she has just done. Now we get the attack on the castle as k and and the OG forces Fort. clash. Toma has a narrow escape against Kanzaki and Style as Dion arrives to support, as the humanoid book fights the Saint of the Far East as Kanzaki jobs yet again. Misaki then decides to order Mikoto to attack hoping to use her fellow level 5 Esper as a weapon. But surprisingly, Mikoto, with her arsenal of weapons from the AAA, opens fire on k &T. This is because the machine is actually taking control over Mikoto's body to fire upon the real enemy in the situation. k &T, being the pussy he is, begs Misaki for help as she uses mental out on index to unlock her John's pen mode so that she can use magic Fight. to combat the AAA. As the two robot-like girls clash against each other in a stalemate. OG Toma arrives in the room as he sees magic versus science before his eyes and also Misaki sitting on the floor injured and bleeding while holding her whistle at the same time. The one memento she has of her past with Toma. Toma in his dragon form talks to her despite no longer having these memories and not understanding her actions. With Misaki stating she knew inside that this Toma was the boy she fell in love with. Not k and T, the imposter. Toma tells her to hang on and not give up as Misaki is about to accept she might just die. Hell, Kamachi even says in the afterword it was a bit too close a call, but we all know no one important ever stays dead in this series, so nice try Kamachi. 
Komachi. And no, Frenda is not important. Cope and Steve. Anyway, K and T interrupts this heartfelt moment, saying it's such misfortune to lose mental out. But that's just how it goes, as Imagine Breaker brings about the bad luck. This triggers the OG, saying that K and T should be using this power to protect and not hurt others. Meanwhile, Accelerator saves Hamazara's ass, as he must now face the Queen of England, with every country that was invaded by England cheering him on. While he did face some difficulty fighting Lizard due to her Katana second being able to bypass his reflector shield, the strongest level 5 quickly adapts as Accelerator utilizes his new scientific weapon toys courtesy of Alistair's phone, quickly overwhelming Liz and defeating her. Toma then fights K and T using his greatest speed and power to hopefully overwhelm his doppelganger, knowing that one touch from Imagine Breaker will nullify his dragon shell. Their clash results in K and T turning into his own dragon form, but with pink and green colors as Toma embraces his human form to fight the monster. K and T reveals that he is nothing more than an ability, not a magic breaker, but another hidden being that Toma unconsciously created from his desire to know the true function of a magic breaker after losing his memories. K and T bites down on Toma's sky blue arm as they trade blows, with Toma breaking his no kill rule by stabbing K and T with a kitchen knife. Really? K and T then disappears back into Toma's right arm as the OG returns to normal and regains Imagine Breaker once more. Toma manages to nullify Index's John's pen mode, but unlike the time when he got his brain fried, he raises Imagine Breaker above his head to cancel out the memory destroying feathers saying to Index, let's go home. While Academy City was temporarily shut down due to Alistair previously disabling the city's tech, things are back up and running as all the exiled students and teachers return. But not everything remains the same as Accelerator and Clipper storm the board of directors meeting room with him asserting his authority as the new board chairman. Dion Fortune is also made the new Archbishop of the Anglican Church to replace Coronzon, despite being a fake copy of the real Dion Fortune who has only existed for like what? A few days? At least Dion was a Christian IRL despite being involved with magic, so I guess it makes sense, kinda? Alistair also managed to send a message to Strimicardo Motoharu to beware of Anna Sprengel, which causes him to disappear for the next nine volumes. Nice job, Kamachi. Anna expresses her surprise that KT lost the battle as she states, Do not think this is over, as New Testament 22R and New Testament as a whole ends. Is it just me, or does NT22R sound a lot like NTR? Don't ask questions. Make sure you check out my other Index Light Novel summaries on screen right now for more awesome Toaru content, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.